In the interests of fair play, the contest was declared a draw, with both men showing their skills aren't only confined to the track. Just to add to the competition's sense of fun, Real Madrid soccer star David Beckham sent the drivers a text message saying, I hope the only thing you burn this weekend is rubber. But with the fun and excitement comes an element of danger. Italian racer Alex Zanardi's near-fatal crash cost him both his legs and it sent shockwaves through the racing teams. When preparing for a race at the Milan circuit, Michael's unease grew as the news filtered through of the crash. In that race, Michael finished fourth, a race that would remain exceptional in the German's recent career. It was to show the last time he had been off the podium, and the only time since 2000, that he had finished a race outside the top three. For the rest of 2001, barring two retirements, Michael finished 14 times in the top two positions. In 2002, he had won a record 10 races, was second three times and third once. The impressive list showed the steely determination Michael was well known for, and he went on to break a series of records, including the most points scored in a single championship, with 122, one less than his own 2001 record. Considered the best Formula One driver in the world and one of the best of all time, Michael's signature moves and famed aggression has allowed him to realize a dream that began over 25 years ago. Racing certainly runs in the Schumacher family with Michael's younger brother Ralph driving for the BMW Williams team. Debuting with Jordan, Ralph found his time there frustrating and it wasn't long before he was looking for another drive. So in 1999, he made the move to Williams and made a name for himself in the world of Formula One. The name Schumacher certainly attracts plenty of attention, on and off the racing track. When Ralph married his wife Cora, the Formula One driver made an impressive entrance by flying to the church in a helicopter. With fans lining the street outside the church in Austria, Ralph and his bride emerged from the church to the waiting crowd. The year before, the couple had married in a low-key civil ceremony without family and friends. But this time, big brother Michael was asked to be the best man, and he was happy to oblige. After the event, Michael slipped out the back entrance while Ralph and his wife posed for pictures before leaving for Cologne. The world of Formula One is big business, with many promotional days planned for racing enthusiasts. When Ralph was in Russia, he found the time to support the Formula One Driving Day, which was set up to promote safer driving in Moscow. Road fatalities are commonplace in the Russian capital, and it seemed appropriate to see a Formula One driver at the wheel whilst navigating the dangerous roads. Ralph was only too happy to pass on his wisdom, but had to swap his racing car for a more modest mode of transport before signing a few autographs for the F1 fans. Formula One racing is an extremely dangerous sport and the Williams team has experienced plenty of tragedy in their history. But with Ralph at the wheel, he has bought a new lease of life, bringing his determination and sheer skill to the famed racing team. It is a combination that has won the admiration of Formula One fans around the world. The allure of sport attracts fans from all walks of life, and the glamour of Formula One brings out the brightest stars. Rubbing shoulders with famous actors like compatriot Sean Connery is all in a day's work for Scottish driver David Coulthard, the number one driver for the McLaren Mercedes. Not shy of the limelight, David's image has been featured on a billboard four stories high for Tag Heuer in New York. The Swiss watchmaker is the official timekeeper of Formula One and a corporate partner of the McLaren Mercedes Formula One team. The four-story billboard was Tag Heuer's largest in the world and was part of a new ad campaign. Coming from a well-to-do Scottish family, David was surrounded by racing from an early age. He was karting from the age of eight and was a multiple Scottish champion before he moved into Formula Ford, then Formula Three in 1991. It was that year that David fought a season-long battle for the title with Rubens Barrichello, with the Brazilian eventually coming out on top. David's Formula One career began in 1994 in difficult circumstances. He was thrust into the spotlight when he replaced the legendary Ayrton Senna after his fatal crash. At the time, David was driving for the Williams team, who were dominating the sport at the time, and was sharing a seat with Nigel Mansell. 
The next season with Williams driving alongside Damon Hill, David won his first Grand Prix in Portugal, beating both Michael Schumacher and his own teammate, finishing third for the season with 49 points. The following year was to see the move to McLaren, partnering Mika Hakkinen. But without a competitive car, David struggled throughout the year. The highlight of that year was a second placing in the famous Monte Carlo Grand Prix, where only three cars finished the race. As the McLaren team became more competitive, so did David, and in Melbourne in 1997, he broke the drought by putting McLaren back on the winning track. Winning again in Monza, he finished equal third with John Alexi in the Drivers' Championships. Over the course of the next few years, David had his share of ups and downs with pit confusion, accidents and the occasional mechanical problem, but it didn't slow him down too much. A serious plane crash in 2000 seemed to give the Scot a new perspective on life, but despite a very strong challenge for championship glory, he finished third in the standings. Despite his gallant efforts, David has been plagued with team reliability problems. And with the emergence of a very dominant Michael Schumacher in the Ferrari team, the task of reaching the top keeps getting harder and harder. But when he's racing head-to-head -head with the best drivers in the world, David's never-give-up attitude will always come to the fore. On a four-day Ferrari team skiing holiday at the Madonna di Campliglio Resort in Italy, Rubens Barrichello and his teammates made the most of the pre-season getaway. At a go-kart race on ice, Rubens put all his past skills of karting to the test as he, teammate Michael Schumacher and test driver Luciano Berti raced each other, displaying their usual skill and aggression and even finding time for a trick or two on the way. Nearing the end, the trio crossed the finish line together, bringing back memories of the controversial finish at the Indianapolis Grand Prix in 2002 that had fans up in arms and team orders banned. But controversy aside, Rubens has amazing talent. His debut season in 1993 with Formula One was sensational. He may not have ended the season with the points tally that he deserved, but he certainly proved that he was one of the best drivers in wet conditions, as well as entirely competent in the dry. The Brazilian went from Jordan to signing a multi-year contract with the new Stuart Ford team, but the move proved to be a disaster. He then received the call to go to Ferrari as teammate to Michael Schumacher. It was a tough job, but Rubens was strong enough to cope, and in 2000 he took his first win in the German Grand Prix. Before arriving at Ferrari though, Rubens had put in many hard years. The Jordan team began to suffer from reliability problems, even though the Brazilian had some brilliant results. 1996 proved to be a disappointing year, and Rubens parted ways with the Jordan team. Signing with Stuart Ford proved no better, with engines failing, despite the return of his personal performance. A superb second place at Monaco in 1997, one of the few times the car actually made it to the line, was a testament to his speed in wet weather conditions. But Rubens needed a car that would enable him to finish a race in order to make any progress as a driver, as well as to motivate himself, and he found that with Ferrari. But since joining the influential Ferrari team, the FIA pressed new rule changes designed to make Formula One cheaper and more exciting. With the spiralling costs required to compete at the highest level, the governing body announced a deal to keep the circuit from shrinking to eight. But the sport's richest teams, like Ferrari and Williams, balked at some of the ideas. Formula One has been dominated by Ferrari, with the team winning 15 of 17 races in 2002. But smaller teams are struggling to compete with the Italian giant, and with Ferrari's ability to secure the talents of Ruben Barrichello and Michael Schumacher, they are sure to stay on top of the championship's table. Two-time Formula One champion Mika Hakkinen retired in 2002, ending a career that spanned for more than a decade. Mika, the elder flying Finn, who had 20 Grand Prix wins in his 11-year and 161 race career, decided to quit at the 2001 Monaco Grand Prix, but was persuaded by team principal Ron Dennis to take some time to think it over. But the sabbatical failed to change his mind, and when the Finn visited the Monaco Grand Prix, it only strengthened his original decision. 
Mika and his former racing partner David Coulthard spent six seasons together in the longest Formula One partnership to date, and the Scot was sorry to see his friend go. But as sad as it was to leave the sport he loved, a relaxed Mika now spends his time between Monaco and Finland, enjoying his young son Huber and wife. With the hope of more children in the future, Mika has found a lifestyle worth enjoying. Retirement meant that the 2001 Indianapolis Grand Prix will go down in history as the Finn's last victory, as well as one of his most satisfying. This year was more about, you know, the time I want to spend with the family to see the Hugo growing, spend time with my wife, and uh, I, I, I simply also I didn't want to hurt myself. I, I've been so much through in my career in, in Formula One, particularly in '95, so I. I, I did achieve so much. I, I thought it's not worth it to anymore to, 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 to push your luck further. Throughout his time at McLaren, he made a lifelong friend in team boss Ron Dennis. Ron stood by him after a near-fatal crash at the 1995 Australian Grand Prix in Adelaide, when the Finn speared into a wall at high speed in practice. Mika suffered head injuries and nearly suffocated until quick surgery by trackside doctors cleared his airways. But once racing is in the blood, it is hard to get it out of the system. And with two Formula One World Championships already under his belt, the retired 34-year-old decided to test himself on four-wheeled racing of a different kind. The opportunity to race in his home rally just held too much appeal. Mika completed three days of practice on the frozen Kemijoki River in the north of Finland for his guest appearance as a Mitsubishi driver in the Arctic Rally. He admitted that he was enjoying the format immensely, but was also acutely aware of the difference between the driving styles and the pressures involved. He realized that having a world championship in one discipline did not mean a prospective championship in the other. But the talented driver always wanted to try rally driving, and when the opportunity came up at the right time, Mika was willing to give it a go. And if all went well, then he would consider taking part in further rallies. For a rookie, he had plenty of talent and pedigree on his side, with more Finns having won the World Rally Championship than anyone else since the series began in the late 1980s. And when it comes to pedigree, Mika tops the list. His first win in Formula One opened a floodgate, and he took eight victories in 1998 to beat Ferrari's Michael Schumacher to the championship by 14 points. He repeated the feat in 1999, beating Ferrari's Eddie Irvine to the title by two points after Michael Schumacher broke his leg at Silverstone. But the German was determined to get back into racing against Mika, rating him as his most competitive opponent on the circuit. The back-to-back -back world championships powered the Finn into the select band of the world's greatest drivers. He joined six other luminaries who have achieved this feat, including Alberto Ascari, Juan Manuel Fangio, Jack Brabham, Elaine Prost, Ayrton Senna and Michael Schumacher. In his final season, the Finns' thoughts were clearly elsewhere and he finished fifth overall, despite wins at Indianapolis and Silverstone. Both victories came after he had made up his mind to quit. Juan Pablo Montoya made an impressive debut into Formula One, fully justifying the faith shown in him by Frank Williams. Even though he was frustrated from having to retire from 11 of the 17 races, two of which he could have won, the talent that impressed the Williams team in the beginning shone through. Juan Pablo Montoya. It was his raw talent that earned him the Laureus Sports Award and thrust him into the spotlight. He continued to impress in his debut season, earning his first win in Monza. Despite all the setbacks, Juan managed to accumulate an impressive 31 points, finishing sixth overall in his first season. Life off the track for Juan was just as successful as his racing career, with the Williams driver marrying Connie Freidel in a private ceremony in Colombia. The couple were accompanied by 300 family and friends when they wed in the temple of Santo Toribio di Cartagena. With Colombia suffering from constant violence, the area was surrounded by security agents and hovering police helicopters. Returning to his home country, the Formula One driver was inundated with well-wishers, including a call from Colombian President Alvaro Uribe. 
When Juan had the opportunity to trade places with NASCAR champion Jeff Gordon, he grabbed it wholeheartedly. Jeff drove the BMW Williams and Juan turned laps in the NASCAR Winston Cup car at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway's infield road course. This was the first time the two racing stars had driven their respective cars and it was an event they fully enjoyed. In the event named Trading Paint, Jeff, a four times NASCAR champion, and Juan, fresh off a Formula One victory at Monaco, burned up the circuit. Even though the racing was competitive, the day was a break from the grind of Formula One. After the ride, Juan joked that he thought there was not enough braking power in the stock car and that he needed a parachute to stop. It wasn't long before it was back to the serious business with Williams and with the dominance of Ferrari and Michael Schumacher, the Williams team was looking for a boost. Founded by Frank Williams in the late 1960s, a lack of financial support made success difficult to achieve. The team's first win came at Silverstone in 1979, followed by a driver's championship for Alan Jones and a constructor's title in 1980. In 1986, Frank Williams was involved in a road accident which left him paralyzed. Despite the trauma, the Williams drivers Mansell and PK dominated, with Elaine Prost claiming the championship. Frank realized a dream when he signed Ayrton Senna, but it turned into a nightmare when the brilliant Brazilian driver was killed at Imola. This left Damon Hill in the driver's seat, winning the title in 1996. It was in 1999 when Frank acknowledged the talent of Juan, organizing a swap deal for the Colombian to take up the role in the Chip Ganassi team. There he flourished, taking the kart title in his rookie year. He claimed seven wins throughout the season, as well as seven poles, becoming the youngest champion in the history of the sport. Although Frank Williams wanted Juan back for the 2000 season, he remained with the kart series. He also went on to win the Indianapolis 500 on his very first attempt. Returning to Williams in 2001 to partner Ralph Schumacher, Juan saw his first Formula One victory. He secured several podium finishes and three pole positions in his debut season. A tussle with Michael Schumacher when the Colombian refused to back down to the German and a fierce confrontation with Jacques Villeneuve caused quite a stir on the track and his aggressive driving style has become a trademark for the fiery Williams driver.